All right, so in this rebuild project, we have a ton of parts that need to be zinc plated and then yellow chromated in the engine bay and on the carburetors. And what that means is we wanna take something like this and make it look something more like this. Stay tuned. So what's up guys, thanks for joining another episode of Cars, Bikes and Coffee where we like to rebuild and restore cars. My name is Kurt and what we're doing today is going through a bunch of tiny parts and the engine bay and throughout the car and as well carburetors and what we're doing is, is we're taking them, we're stripping them, we're replating them in zinc and then adding a yellow chromate uh, color to them and that's gonna just make them last longer and as well pop and really look nice in the engine bay, um, the carburetors, and really to show this car. And that is the 1974 260Z that we're building. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a playlist in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification, really helps out. So today, we're gonna go through my process, all the things that I've learned through my mistakes, through my trials, and I'm gonna teach you how you can do it easily and for not that much. So let's get into it. All right, so there's four basic steps in this plating process. The first is, of course, prep. And you first want to degrease your part. If you have access to a sandblaster, is sandblast it really well. Then what we're gonna do is put that in a muriatic acid in water or hydrochloric acid bath. And that's going to strip all the old plating off. And then we're going to move into a plating process, which I'll explain in detail in a little bit. And then after that, in this case, we're gonna be doing yellow chromate, and that's gonna give it that yellowy gold look to the part. And then after that is, of course, just drying. So I'm gonna go over all those steps in detail, but first let's go over what parts, what pieces, you know, what kits uh, that I have bought to make this process a lot easier. So let's check it out. All right, so let's first talk about prep and the tools and the things that I bought to make this process easier. I did mention the sandblaster. If you have access to one, definitely recommend. If you don't, it's not a deal breaker. You can come up with other ways to remove paint and things like that. So use your imagination. So let's first take a look at the tools that I have here. And one of them, of course, is the bench grinder. And the bench grinder is gonna come in handy after we put it through the bath. And this is a brass wheel that we use. And for small and tiny spaces, using a Dremel with one of these, it's almost like a Scotch-Brite pad that spins. That'll help where you can't reach with one of these discs. So we're gonna go to the back of the garage. We're gonna open our garage door when we do this part. But this is hydrochloric acid, basically it's water and muriatic acid. And I have a little Tupperware dish, bucket, whatever, with holes drilled in it. So it'll drain and a little cable to be able to dip and pull it out. But I'll show you that. So the big thing is buying these little buckets. I think these are one and a half gallon from your favorite hardware store. And you're gonna fill it with water and buy a little bit of muriatic acid and carefully pour it in acid into water, not the other way around. Otherwise you're gonna have splashing and possibly acid in your face. So always wear gloves and protective eyewear. All right, so when you're buying your buckets for your acid bath, you might as well go and buy at least four more. So a total of five. I think the Caswell kit comes with a bucket and of course, that's a great introduction to the kit I use. I use Caswell's kit and I will put a link and all of these items in the description below, but definitely suggest, I think it's around $250 for the kit. You get the solution, you get the zinc plates, you get a pump filter and you get the brightener. And then also you can then buy the yellow chromate from them, which I totally suggest just buying the kit. I tried doing this from scratch, you know, buying the zinc ingots and trying to build it. It's a pain, just buy the kit, trust me. And when you do also get their book, it has a bunch of detail on, of course, zinc plating, 
but also anodizing and everything else you would want to know about electroplating. So we have a copper tube and we bent the ends and just made them flat so the tube stays still. And this is where we're gonna hang our parts from to plate. We have a aquarium heater and you're gonna to wanna to buy two of those. And we'll look at the second one in a minute. And that keeps this solution nice and warm. And then we did go and get a power supply Definitely recommend this because you're gonna to want to have the ability to adjust your amperage. With hanging your parts using copper wire, you can use thinner copper wire for screws and nuts, but this gauge of 18 has worked really well. And the Scotch-Brite pad, that's to ensure that this copper tube stays clean. I put the lid on it and it gets liquid on it, so it of course oxidizes, so we wanna keep that nice and clean. I do use a thermometer because I wanna make sure that the water temperature or the solution temperature is the right temp. Now the other part of this process is having a degreaser, and it's real easy just to get one of these cheap crock pots at a store, and then that will keep this solution you know, in the 100 and plus temperature range. So definitely get one of those. As far as the other buckets, you're gonna have just a rinse pail. This is after you plate, we're gonna rinse, and that looks gross, I know, but we're just going to use that for a rinse. This is our yellow chromate. Here is our second fish aquarium heater. So this keeps the solution about 80 degrees. And then you have a final rinse bucket and that's just to get the chromate off of your part once you've dipped. And this is our clean hydrochloric acid, and that's only for after plating. You're gonna do what they call like a bright dip, or you know this is pickling the part, and what that's gonna do is just eat a very tiny bit of your zinc plating prior to putting in to the chromate. It gives it a kind of an etch so your chromate will adhere better. So once you're done with the chromate, the only other thing you need is something to hang your parts on. I use a ladder, and then I'm gonna have a fan that will blow on the parts. So we'll look at that through our process. Definitely having a nice counter space is helpful. I think that's the only benefit of all these kitchen cabinets that I use in my garage. And then once you're done, you can have some nice chromated parts. So let's go through the process of doing this part. And I definitely recommend using a part that's really simple, you know, a square rectangular shape and something that you can figure out the surface area because that's gonna make getting everything dialed in so much easier. So let's take a look. All right, so I've got some graph paper and this is gonna be kind of explaining, you know, if you have a part that looks like this that's crazy in shape, it'll help a lot easier. But we're gonna use this rectangular piece just to keep things simple. So we're gonna use our graph paper and we're just going to take our part and line it up with the graph lines and just make a rough trace. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just ballpark. And then what we're gonna do is count the squares that we used. So when you have some of these that are not full, you can just kind of guesstimate that, okay, this is, let's say one more square, two, three, four, so 33 plus four, so 37 squares. Now we need to do both sides, so we're gonna multiply that by two, which is 74, and for my graph paper here, 16 squares equals one square inch. So we're gonna divide 74 by 16. That equals 4.625. Now when we're plating, it is suggested that you do 0.14 amps for every square inch. So we're gonna multiply that by 0.14. That equals 0.65 amps. So that's what we're gonna shoot for. 
So now that we've measured our part, you can see this is the one I sandblasted and you can see it's very rough in texture, but there is probably and most likely still some old plating that is on this. So what I wanna do is take this to our acid bath and let it sit in there until it stops bubbling. That means that the reaction of removal of the old plating is done and then we can bring it back and do our next step. So I just have a piece of copper wire that I cut from our roll and we want this long enough to be able to hook on our copper tube and as well hook our part. So let's take this over to our acid bath. All right, so now we're at our acid bath and you definitely want to do this with some good ventilation. You do not want this near your tools because this will flash rust anything metal nearby. So you wanna be very careful. So you can see this is really dirty from all the other stuff that I've done with my plating. So that's why we have two separate baths, but we're gonna do this quick. We're gonna put our part in our little bucket and then we're gonna put our Tupperware dish in. And essentially, let me turn a light on. You can see the sizzling happening and the bubbling is hydrogen, so we want to not breathe that in. That's one of the other reasons why you want good ventilation. And we're gonna leave this sit until the bubbling stops. All right, so let's go check on our part. We've got our distilled water spray, if it's ready. And yes, it is nighttime. So it looks good. It's not bubbling anymore. So I'm gonna set the camera down and just spray this with the distilled water. All right, so now that our part is out of the acid bath and we wash that with distilled water and you're gonna to wanna to buy a few gallons of distilled water because you're gonna need it for all of your baths, your rinses, your spray bottle. So, and then of course you can use it in the acid bath. But now what we're gonna do is dry this part and then we're going to remove the little copper wire and we're just gonna use the brass wire brush on the bench grinder and get it all nice and clean. And you can already tell it's rusting really quick, but that's okay because once we hit it with the bench grinder, that'll all be removed. All right, so now that we have our part really shiny, and now this is the piece where if you wanted a dull result, you wouldn't have to do the bench grind. You could just acid bath and then put it in this next step, but I like the shiny. Making sure that your prep is on point is gonna make the end result that much better. So we, we've got it all shiny, we've got all the edges, and it's ready. So now what we need to do is this is a degreaser. So we're gonna put it back on our line. We're gonna put it in, make sure it's all stirred up and we're just gonna drop it into the crock pot and we're gonna let it sit for about five minutes. All right, so while we wait for our part to degrease, what we're gonna do is just talk about the plating bath. Now the plating bath, you wanna mark a line at the level when you set up your kit. And, and obviously with the heating of the solution, you'll evaporate. And so you'll want to add more distilled water every once in a while when it gets too low. The other thing is if you're finding that your parts are not as bright when they plate, because they should be shiny when they come out of the plating tank, is you're gonna add more brightener. And it's just a small amount, but you'll wanna do that every once in a while. Um, I've set up the filter on the side to keep it out of the way. I zip tied it to a piece of plastic and clipped it in. The other thing is, is remove all the filters from that pump. Carbon will remove the brightener from the solution. And so far with all the filters removed, I've found the best results. The other thing is you wanna keep the temperature somewhere around 80, 90 degrees. And the fish aquarium heater works really well for that. So timer says we're done. So we're gonna pull our part and we need our distilled water. 
and we're just going to give it a spray. I'm going to remove the degreaser from it. Shake it out. And then we are just going to take this part and we're going to put it right into our bath. And you'll notice now my copper tube is a lot cleaner. I just used my Brill pad to clean it. And I did that off of the tank. You don't want that stuff going in your solution. And just to show what this looks like, we've got the part right below the surface. It sits in between two plates of zinc. So that way we don't get any you know, ghosting effect. It'll plate both sides equally. Our pump is running. We've got good temperature. We're at 84 degrees. So now what we want to do is go ahead and turn our power supply on. And on my side of my left is the current. And we wanted to set that at 0.65. All right, so we're set. And you'll see this move as it goes through the plating process. And what we want to see is no bubbles. If you see a lot of bubbles, then there is an issue. And the other thing that you'll want to just watch for, we're going to set the timer for about 10 minutes. And we want to just see a slight amount of bubbles, very slight. And I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but we basically want to see that part still stay bright after that 10 minutes. If we see some gray spots, then we wanna just turn the amps up very, very small amounts until we see everything go that nice bright zinc color. So let's check back on this in about 10 minutes. All right, now I just came in and checked on it and you'll see, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but see how it's bright on the edges and a little gray? So what I wanna do is just bring the amps up. There's no mad, um, well, there is mad science to it, but I'm gonna put it to that. I just don't want crazy amount of bubbles. And what's gonna happen is, is as you turn those amps up, that shiny silver will start to appear. And that's what you want. And that's another important point. You know, with this process and being a simple piece to measure, it's not always perfect. And so, you may have to you know, pull it out, take it to the bench grinder, get it nice and polished, and just start over again or put it back in the acid bath. But you just have to get a little bit of patience, and especially when you're setting it all up and getting all the components right. And that's why I definitely suggest you just buy the kit. It'll save you a lot of headache and a lot of time. So let's check back in a couple minutes. All right, so we're at the 10 minute mark and I think we've got the amperage dialed in just right. And you know, this is one of those trial and error things. Sometimes the, you know, resistance through the part is a little bit more. So you just have to play with it and just find that right amount, but it's looking shiny and not any gray spots. There's a little bit, so I might just turn it up just a little bit more. And for normal parts, you really only need to go about 20 minutes or so. So we're gonna let this go for another 10 minutes. You know, when you're doing tiny screws and bolts, only a few minutes is really needed. So let's give it another 10 and check in. And while we're waiting on it, I wanna show, this is a great way to do springs, vital parts on Instagram. I'll link him down below. He had this idea because if you have a spring that's compressed, you're not gonna get into those tiny spots. So use something to keep the spring open. That way the insides or in between of the spring, don't know the technical term, but that way they get plated as well. And then you get a nice result like this. So definitely suggested. All right, so we've gone for our full 20 minutes and it's looking pretty good. So we're gonna turn off our power supply I'm just going to take a look, see how shiny it comes out. So let's take this over to our first rinse bucket using our distilled water. I'm going to spray it down. We're going to take it to our little muriatic acid, hydrochloric acid, and we're going to go in there for three seconds. What that's going to do is just give it a nice brightness. We're going to go right into the yellow chromate and do this for 15 seconds. Then from there, 
comes out, we'll bring it to our second rinse and we're gonna spray it down. And then we're gonna hang it up. We've got a fan running right here and what we wanna see as it dries, it gets that yellow and gold, greens and blues in that iridescence. So we're gonna let that dry for 24 hours. We're not gonna to touch it because we don't want to affect that yellow chromate. We're just gonna let it blow in the wind. All right, so take a look at that piece. It's been about 24 hours and I think it came out really nice. So let's talk about cost. So the Caswell kit for the one and a half gallons, that's really all you need for the small parts that we do in our engine and in the car. And that's about $241. The yellow chromate from Caswell also is $39. Then the kit comes with two buckets, but you'll want about three more, and that's going to be about $15 at your hardware store. They're about $5 each. And make sure you get the lids, so that way when you're done, you can store them and put them away. Uh, next thing is you'll need two heaters, and you can get those on Amazon. And for two, they're about $30, about $15 each. And then of course, for those uh, acid baths, you'll need some muriatic acid, which is about $9 for a small bottle. So as far as tools, you're looking at the bench grinder, which is about $58. And to get one of those brass discs, and you know that's gonna be a lot lighter than the, the stainless steel, uh, that's gonna be about $10. The rotary tool that I use is about $19, and the abrasive wheels, uh, a pack of 100 is also $19. So you're looking at a total for that you know, package or that kit, spending about $440 before shipping and taxes. If you didn't want to get those tools and you already had them, you're looking at about $334 before shipping and taxes. I would highly recommend getting this equipment if you feel that you're going to be doing a full car restoration and you probably would use it in the future as well for some other parts. So make sure you stay tuned for our future videos on the 260Z. I think being a logistics, we're still in right now. I might switch a little bit off and on of the 300ZX Turbo. You need to see that in, on the channel. So we might be doing some repair work for that in between. So definitely stay tuned. But until next time, we'll see you on the next one.